Emma, congratulations. Another FA Cup, another trophy. It feels easy to just keep saying you've won, but you have won again, and how does that feel? When I watched the kick-off, we didn't execute it. Then we didn't execute the second, then the third, then the fourth phase, and they scored. I thought, it's going to be a long game. Because no one really understands. Nobody plays more games than Chelsea, year on year. It's really hard. That was our third game in seven days. You know, Man United had ten days. Forgive me, maybe even a week, but a week feels like ten days. Trust me, it is really difficult to play every three days again and again and to play high-octane football, whether that's pressing, whether that's stretching. I thought the first half, we were just off everything. Second to the ball, second in the first movements. And sometimes you can look at somebody and say, is, is it a tactical problem? No, it's the execution of the tactical work, and that's physical. And I said to the girls at half-time, listen... This is the grind. This is what it's about. And I honestly, I say this, only we none know what this is like. We're the team that have done it year on year, grind and grind and grind to compete on all fronts at this moment in time. Yes, Man United had the first half, but we had the second half. And I think made an adjustment, went to a 4-4-2. When P came onto the pitch, we then had a second stretch runner because they were man-marking um, Sam Kerr. And we desperately needed that runner. And most importantly, we needed Sophie Ingle. We needed somebody to control the middle of the park. Something I didn't think we did in the first half. Uh, and then we grew into the game. And I thought we had the better in the second half. Yeah, and you mentioned there about that sort of need to just relentlessly <coughs> play and, and try and win and the chase and pack in a way. With the chase and pack all, almost becoming sort of better each year, does each time you win almost feel even sweeter because it you know that it's it's getting harder to keep doing that i've said it to you guys many times the team that's not in the champions league always has the advantage to win the league and i stand by it i stand by that we've had to play wednesday last sunday and we've got to still play wednesday and we've got to play sunday like, don't underestimate how hard that is i felt tired on the touchline just from you play games you don't sleep you gotta go again it's a, and that's what I refer to when it comes to the grind. So for that reason, it's even more impressive. A team can just dig and dig and dig when it isn't physic we physically <clears throat> weren't at our best today. I thought we grew in the second half. Confidence with Sophie and Peniel coming in uh, to the game. And listen, Man United are a wonderful team. Uh, they could controlled the proceedings early on. It is easier when you're unable to press in the way that you want to. Nonetheless, they are a top team. They're deserving of being there. But how clinical we were with P coming on. In other weeks, P would have started. But, you know, I want to preserve her career too. She had a big injury and it's important to do that. Yeah, just finally for me, a word on Sam Kerr. She delivered again, as she always does. I've never, I've never coached a player like her. And a player to have such conviction, such confidence, such courage, the way she attacks everything. What I love about Sam is she's willing to take responsibility for the team in the top end of the pitch. And But I think it's important to mention Peniel Harder because without Peniel Harder, she wouldn't have got that goal. And Peniel came in and did exactly what... <coughs> We'd asked and what we'd missed. Um, so congratulations to the team, the squad. And I think it's important. It will bug me if I don't say this. I'm a football fan. And I've watched how much my club has suffered this year. We've had ownership changes. The men's team hasn't been brilliant. Chelsea fans, this is for you. Thanks, Emma. I'm sure Thank they'll you, enjoy that. Molly, next, please. That's right. Oh, Dan, come across to you, Dan. Sorry. Hey, Emma, congratulations. Mm. What is it about Sam Kerr and finals? Because what's that, 10 goals in six now or something like that? It's, it's hard to score in a final, but to do so many is, yeah, pretty amazing. She needs service. She didn't get any in the first part of the game. You need that. And then you've got to execute it. She executed it with the outside of her boot, which Denise Reddy, my assistant, absolutely hates. So I'm glad Sam has shoved that one up Denise's backside. Because I'm the attacking coach and Denise is the defending coach. I like the outside foot touches. Denise don't. But... Um, she's just so alive. She's so alive to situations. She's so 
she can cope with the pressure, the expectations and everything that comes with being a top level football footballer. And honestly, she's the sweetest human being, such a lovely person. And do you deserve a big pat on the back with the substitutions? Because obviously Penilla and <coughs> Sophie Ingle right at the right time. Kadisha with a great clearance at the end as well, I think. Yeah, I will. I'll pat myself on the back. But this is the most important thing, more silverware. And as I said, it was hard. Man United made it so hard. Like, congratulations to them. They are, they're going to continue to push. They're a wonderful football team. Um, and I think, like I said, the first half I thought they had their best. Um, but this is a victory for grind. I don't mean to be an ad advertisement for something that's wrong, but I mean, like, hard work for me absolutely matters, and I think we can roll our sleeves up with the best of them and hang in there. If I can go to Molly next, please, Dan. Thank you. Hi, Emma. Congratulations. Um, a lot of people, yourself included, have talked about Chelsea this season maybe not playing their best and still winning. Is instead of that being like disrespect, is it almost the, the biggest compliment to this team that they, they find a way? I think our team's been in transition. We had six different players in the starting lineup to last year's final. And I think when you go through transitions, i.e. you want to integrate more players, you have to accept that it isn't always going to be clean because you're developing new partnerships. But for Ev Perise, Mara Mielda, Neve Charles, Lauren James... Melanie Leopold's missing one. Huh? Aaron. Jesse. Jesse Fleming. All different from last year. That, for me, is the sign of real progress. Cause my big thing is how can we still keep winning while transitioning? I don't want to be that coach, but that happens. So this year I've tried to get as many players, as many opportunities and keep developing their experiences in all areas of the pitch. And to win, knowing we're in that stage, this is far and away my um, most memorable FA Cup final. And Definitely. Forgive the niche question, but in uh, 2021, before a Champions League game, you showed the team a video of a UFC fighter mm -hmm. and she said, I am the best. And you wanted your team to become mentality monsters and, and mm -hmm. sort of replicate that. Is this squad now past that? They don't need that <clears throat> kind of influence from you because they look around and they see that in the dressing room. They definitely don't need that from me. Though for me today, I had some of my own inspirations in the crowd. There was a basketball coach who I absolutely love, Cara Lawson, who came over from the US with her sister and I hope to meet her. She inspires me every day. Um, what the team has become is the most flexible team. In our, you know I don't talk about tactics and I promised Lydia that I will do it at the end of the season with you and I don't do it for reason that I want to win. But what I will say is that our team have become hybrid monsters. We can float between in ways that just like that. And that, trust me, takes years to master. And like, congratulations to the players for being so adaptable. Thank you. Sandra? Don't worry about the mic. <coughs> we can hear you. It's all good. I, th I think sometimes we sneer and look down at winning football matches the way we do. There's a, sometimes a sense that everything has to be perfect, but I think any winning manager will tell you through the course of time there's such a, a mixture of performances that go on in the course of the season. We've played extraordinarily well the last two games. We started the game today... Paul Green said that is the worst first half of FA Cup we've ever had. He's not wrong. So finding ways to win when you're not at your best, for me, that is always, always the marker of a great team. Molly, please. Congrats, 
I like that. <laughs> 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 like the manager David Hampton was going over many years. Sometimes yeah. the band can't give you the opportunity, but yeah. more than half the stamina and you know how to do it. Do you think this is what you're building now? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's a good question. But when I have to sit at home alone and think about the work we do every day and the sacrifices we all make. I know I've given my life to it. My little boy wants to probably see a little bit more of me because I can't manage more than this and that. But what I know is that in elite performance, you can't have work-life balance. They don't exist. All you guys know that sat here, being the best you are. So all I know is no matter what, I've given it everything I can to the team, to the club, to, to put, put us in the place that, and I say this with Catherine Ito in the room, I'm still the kid in Camden that's had an absolute ride of a time. Honestly, never. I said it to Aaron and Guru just before we went up the stairs. I said, I'll never tire of this. And I mean this like, like I really do. Hand on my heart, I could cry about it. Chelsea fans, I hope you have a little bit of joy tonight. I hope we gave you something that you can smile about this year. The whole club, owners included. Tim? Um, Emma, considering the number of matches you've had in the yeah. last few weeks, um, you must be doubly pleased with the game management of the last 20 minutes yeah. uh, when clearly the tiredness was starting you must have been secretly dreading the prospect of or the risk of extra time but just talk about that game management for the last 20 minutes we've trained it over a period of time we call them marginals i think the girls managed the marginals really really well what, what, what do you mean by the marginals? the little diff little bits the little marginals that can help you win the game. So all I saw was all the marginals in the performance by lots of different players in different ways. And maybe the 30 second countdown from Denise. My son's started to get into the Beatles. He really loves the Beatles. He likes Yellow Submarine, but we dance around to Love, Love Me Do. And Denise and I started singing. No, we, did, we started singing I Want to Hold Your Hand. And I'll never forget this just as we were singing the lyrics, I turn around, I could just see my little monster and that, that will live with me forever. And, and just a word on Lauren James. Um, she's a bugger to play against, isn't she? I mean, yeah. increasingly, she is just <coughs> so commanding on the pitch. Yeah, she's got to, you know, keep growing, keep improving. You, know, you don't expect me to say anything less said it before the game to her and I said it after. I'm very proud of her. And I know that there's other levels for her and the team to keep fighting, but she, you know, she, she gave her best to the team today. Sure. Oh, she's been around the team. She was in the dressing room. But I, I value my players' opinions, Millie's included. But Maren Mielder had the most significant impact at half-time in the conversation I had with her. But I will often ask the players, what do you think? Where do you think we're struggling? What do you think the game needs? Because sometimes I'm honing in on the whole thing. And they might be honing in on a position. And I'm my skill is that and then take information on then make a decision from it and Marin said something to me at half time I think and I'm not going to tell you what it is but it made a significant impact on the game Yeah. 
Sure. Look, in our environment, we refer to starters and finishers. 11 start, the rest are finishing. And it changes from game to game. Uh, 11 players are only ever happy when they're starting. The finishers are never happy. That's every week, isn't today. What's important is everybody know their role. And if they know their role, they accept their role. And you communicate that in the right way. Then they get past their emotion. And then game day, every player gives everything to the team. And... Sophie was a game changer today, as was Peniel, Sophie particularly. So that's about them swallowing ego and pride and putting the team first and both of them. Of course, just like everybody else on the bench, they want to play, but it's about a game over 90, maybe 120 minutes, and I didn't play for the first 45 minutes. We deliberately played this game exactly the way we wanted with regards to the finishers. We just didn't perform well in the first half. <clears throat> All right then, guys, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Nice one.